which this series review is going to be The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. I'm also going to include The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which just came out, because it technically counts as canon. Basically, the long and short of it is the Hunger Games are the result of a war between the capital and the districts. The United States has devolved and after a war split into 12 districts and the capital. And it's never fully stated but I I almost bet you dollars to donuts that the capital is Denver because they talk about the mountains being backed up on one side of the the capital. So I'm pretty sure it's in Denver. And every year a male and female from each of the districts is sent to the capital to fight in the Hunger Games until one only one survivor comes out. In the book, Katniss, which follows our hero Katniss Everdeen, she volunteers to take the place of her younger sister Prim, whose name is originally called. And over the course of the books, it follows her. In the first book, it follows her into the first Hunger Games and how she manages to survive that. The second book, we follow Katniss as she suffers from the PTSD of both the Hunger Games, her first Hunger Games, and the subsequent victory tour and the fact that President Snow has threatened the life of her and her loved ones. Also, remember that her entire life has been spent under the thumb of the Capitol regardless. Third and final book, Mockingjay, follows Katniss as she is, as the figurehead, she's thrust into the forefront of the rebellion as the figurehead of the Mockingjay. And her subsequent trip to the Capitol to try and kill President Snow and what have you, and everything that happens after that. It's a very good dystopian novel. It it really came out in the late 2000s, but it has managed to stand the test of time 13, 14 years later, it still holds up. Now, some of the language is not so great. It still resonates with me, and I find it still resonates with a lot of people. Now, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I've, I've written a review about it, and the parts of this I enjoyed were learning about, and you don't even really get like a full breakdown, like there's not a play-by-play -play of what happened before and during the war, but you get snippets of it from the main character. So the main character of this book is President Snow. Although I like to break them up into Coriolanus Snow, which is the character in the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and then President Snow in The Hunger Games. I also liked in the first book we get the little, we learn where the hanging tree comes from. We learn a lot of little things about this world and so Suzanne Collins has managed to flesh it out. Even better, she has not messed with her canon so much is to to wreck the original trilogy. However, Coriolanus Snow is a very flat character. He has only one motivation, and it doesn't mesh well with the 18-year-old that he is, so he's kind of flip-flopping back and forth. And there's there's nothing beyond his desire to make the Snows great again. That is that is his only his only motivation the entire time and what worked about President Snow in the original trilogy is that he was a villain he was just a straight up villain he was there to fight Katniss to keep control of Pan Am he played his part well he was very slick he was very you know he's referred to as a snake in the series he played his part well in the original trilogy he was a very good antithesis to Katniss, but it doesn't work. Coriolanus Snow does not equal that person. It just, it doesn't add up. It was not. And I think part of it is that he is 18 and his feelings are all over the place and he doesn't, he doesn't know how to handle that. And I think a lot of people forget that when you're 18, kind of a slave to your hormones and shit and things like that. And it doesn't work with someone with his intellect with his mind. I don't know if she was trying to make him sympathetic. It didn't work. He's a very flat character. To be frank, and I have to agree with a lot of other people, this book didn't need to exist. The two characters, as I have said before, that I would gladly read books about is I would gladly read an expanded story of Hamish's games because he won the 50th quarter quell. I'd like to catch up on Annie and Finnick's son. But that's it. Those are the only two characters I, I needed. I think what she could have done and what she could still do is she could write out almost a history of Pan Am book and I'd eat that shit up because she writes the 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 little bits about Pan Am so well. I, I really think The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes should have been just like a history of Pan Am and it would have worked so much better than focusing an entire book on snow on Coriolanus snow and again I I have to make a distinction between 
18-year-old Coriolana Snow and President Snow in the trilogy. Katniss, I think, will always be up there. One of my favorite female protagonists and just favorite protagonists of all time. There is a question because there's spoilers. I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, Suzanne Collins does really, really well when she gives names. She comes up with this group of Roma because the other word is considered a slur. So I will call them Roma because I believe that's a more appropriate term for them. And they're called, but they're called Covey. So I looked up the word and it means a colorful group of birds. All of the, the Covey have a, a first name based on a song, they say. And then their second, like, it's, it's like in the South, you'd be, some people are called Anna Marie instead of just Anna. It's a very Southern thing, but in this group, you know, so their second name is usually color, like one's Barb Azur. Azur is Spanish for blue. There's taupe. There's, or carmine, sorry, carmine, which is red, if you don't know. The main female in this, that was love interest, I guess, if you want to say, Lucy Gray. She and Snow go into the woods. They're going to run off together, but Lucy figures out some shit, so she tries to escape him. He shoots his gun into the woods. We don't know what happens to her. We don't even really know what happened to the Covey, if they are integrated into 12, if they run off. I don't wonder if these people are not Katniss's dis or ancestors. And I don't want to say ancestors, but like her grandmother or great-grandmother. You know, I don't know. But they're also, Lucy Gray is also an exceptional singer. I don't know if Lucy Gray ever came back. Like, there's an open-ended, it's like, are these people connected to Katniss in a way? Overall, the original trilogy, the original Hunger Games trilogy is awesome. My other question comes is, if I had not read the Hunger Games first, if I had just read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes before, if I had read it as a prequel, would my opinion have changed? I am genuinely curious. So I leave that up to y'all. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you think that Kobe could have been Katniss's? predecessors could having read the ballad of songbirds and snakes have changed your your view of the hunger games since we don't know about snow before this let me go ahead and just give some real quick shout outs first i'm going to go ahead and mention my favorite local bookstore the one i try to get the most books from or try to go through to get my books from and that is Charis Books and More. I hope I'm saying that right because Charis is a Greek word apparently and I am not Greek. It's your independent feminist bookstore here in Atlanta. It's been around for about 45 years. I love it. It is feminist friendly. It is LGBTQ friendly. It is very African American friendly. It is, they host a lot of events. They're not ashamed to be what they are and you can get all kinds of books through them. They might not have it in store, but you can almost always order it through them. And right now they have a special media price where everything you buy you can get for, I think it's three or four dollars, it gets shipped to you. So that's one great thing. And then the booktuber I'm going to shout out this week is Ben from Ben Reads Books. I really like his content because he's looking at things from not just a reader's perspective, but he hopes to one day open his own publishing house and what really drew was he did a review on My Dark Vanessa which is very much a review about a sexual relationship between a teacher and a student and I enjoyed it because he looked at it from a critical point of view and so yeah I recommend checking him out. So let me know in the comments down below like subscribe and I hope y'all enjoyed and I will see y'all next time.